we're looking at bulkhead number four and I've modified uh, the bulkheads uh, number three, four, and five um, to cut the bulkheads off at the water line rather than extending them up. Uh, the original design um, has the uh, <coughs> main deck and then they have uh, raised um, a raised deck area right at the bulkheads and I can only imagine what it was for is probably left over from uh, uh, the original design of, as a sailing cat. Uh, anyways, um, my modification has <coughs> added a, an upright rail, or sorry, 36 inches past the, um, the main deck floor. So I rebuilt the strong back, uh, made it a little bit more stable, and uh, this seemed to work out quite well. You want to keep all the bulkheads uh, very stable in that uh, because you have a little peephole here, and this is this hole is right at the center line and the water line, so it's. A mark that uh, is consistent through all the bulkheads and that peephole allows you to sight right through all the holes to the very front uh, where you have an alignment post with a dot on it and uh, things will uh, line up with that uh, red dot. Uh, it's very accurate. Um, any little movement in the uh, bulkheads and it'll be out of alignment. Uh, I did have a problem with bulkhead number one moving a little too much as I uh, put the stringers on. So what I did was I epoxied uh, all the stringers on to all the other bulkheads and then today I am uh, going to epoxy uh, this bulkhead on, bulkhead number one, as well as the stem, and I haven't shown that yet, and I'll show that in a bit. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, uh, bulkheads, you can see the face, the shiny face of the bulkheads for number one and number two are facing stern, and number three, four, and five are facing towards the bow, and course number six uh, is facing towards the stern and I just did that as a preference for what will be exposed later on when um, uh, the boat is finished and you know what are you going to see um, am I going to leave them naturally finished uh, bulkheads two and one you will be able to see because that's typically used for uh, cutting out and, and making into a storage area. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet, but I want to keep my options open. So I have the stem clamped into place uh, just to check the alignment and I do have a mark uh, going along the stem and that that I need to keep level. Uh, that mark corresponds to the grid uh, on the uh, on the drawing of the stem itself, um, you can see the grid marks are uh, horizontal and vertical, and uh, so that lines up with uh, those grid marks. I want to keep that parallel. I'm also going to, at the top to notch out the stem um, so that the uh, 
keel uh, will will just notch into there and make a better fit. Uh, it's not very well explained on how to mount uh, the stem in the instructions and so I think it's uh, left up to everybody to um, figure it out on for themselves and that. But this is the method I'm going to use. So I've just got it clamped into place now and uh, the keel strip there you see is not the actual keel strip. It's just a uh, um, temporary piece that I put in there. So to help with the alignment of the stem, I've added two parallel strips on the front uh, alignment posts and the uh, gap between the pieces is the exact same distance as the stem. I just used uh, a piece of scrap material, same length, and made sure that uh, the pieces are perfectly vertical. And uh, I'm going to use that to help align the stem when I do a permanent fixture. I'll let that glue dry now. So I have my stem temporarily clamped into place and you can see with the guides it really helps to hold that stem aligned properly. Um, my parallel line um, is there. I'll use my level on that to make sure it's uh, checked to be perfectly level. Um, I have my notch cut into the stem and I have it marked where I want to cut the uh, the plank. Anyways, that's uh, what I'm going to do next. And then I will shift the stem into its final position. Just shift it up and it'll be ready to glue on. So I'm getting ready to put the stem on and uh, one of the things I always use is a plumb bob. And you can see I have a, a, a drawstring pulled right down the center line of the station and uh, the plumb bob of course comes right down to that line right from my keel strip and then I just mark on the end the center line of the keel strip. This is just a double check. So to help it hold in, in place um, I've added a screw to the top of the stem and uh, now all I have to do is epoxy it in place which I'm not going to do at the moment because it is only 7 degrees Celsius in here uh, and a little too cool for epoxying. Um, so I'll leave that for now come back later when it's uh, when the sun is out and it's a little bit warmer. So I have all the fairing done on the keel strip and it came out uh, pretty good so pretty much ready to put the uh, plywood on the sides. I do have also on it the final stringer. Uh, this is a stringer that would normally uh, go through the top of the bulkheads in that end. You can see these bulkheads uh, 5, 4 and 3 have been modified so that the deck will be uh, even throughout the boat. Uh, of course this section is uh, my support mechanism for my railing. Since I'm not going to put the cabin on I'm going to make it an open concept. At the front I've got the stem all fastened. One thing I have to finish is uh, right where the one stringer comes to the front, you can see that there's a gap there. I'm going to add a little piece of uh, wood in here and then this will be all planed at an angle. the first piece of siding um, clamped to the stringers and I'm drawing the uh, line that I'm going to be cutting along the shear line. I'm using a piece of scrap um, 
six mil plywood uh, all along to to add a bit of a space for the uh, for the cut. So when I add the uh, the bottom piece of plywood, uh, it'll fit uh, nicely. So I finished putting the plywood on on uh, two sides of the pontoon and uh, epoxied it on and screwed it on and now I'm going to be removing the screws um, after the epoxy is hardened and over here I've actually started to fill in the uh, screw holes so I have the uh, forward bottom piece of plywood screwed in place ready to be epoxied on uh, this was a real challenge uh, this one section uh, required the plywood to twist around and uh, was quite challenging to get it to fit properly and fasten down so um, I started with the uh, screws on the bottom and uh, fastened it down there first and then I worked my way all around along the top edge and screwed that in place so everything's fastened down now and um, I will go and uh, temporarily fit another section on the other side and then I will do some epoxy This is uh, hull number one and it is pretty much ready for glassing. I'm not going to glass it uh, yet until I get uh, hull number two uh, made and uh, I'll be moving um, this off the, <coughs> the uh, strong back shortly and uh, set, up the, set up the bulkheads for uh, hull number two. Um, I haven't done any work on this really in a few months. I basically took the colder part of the winter off um, to do some interior renovations. Uh, it is now February 19th and uh, it's getting warm enough in the garage uh, now with the sun shining um, in through the south window uh, that uh, it keeps the garage relatively warm. Uh, at least up to uh, above 10 degrees Celsius. It's still a little too cool for um, fiberglassing, so I will do the construction on the hull number two next.